Welcome back to Celeb Memorial TV, where we honor the legends and icons who left a lasting impact on our lives. From film and music to sports and beyond, we celebrate their legacies and stories. Subscribe and join us in keeping their memories alive. Frank Farian, the legendary German record producer and singer, passed away at the age of 82 in Miami, Florida. His remarkable career transformed the landscape of pop music, leaving an indelible mark through iconic acts like Boney M, Millie Vanilli, and No Mercy. Born on July 18, 1941 in Kern, Germany, Farian overcame a challenging early life, having never met his father, who was killed in World War II. Initially trained as a chef, Farian's passion for music led him to pursue a career in the industry, and by the 1970s, he emerged as one of the most influential figures in the world of disco and pop. Farian's success story truly began with the creation of Boney M in 1974. The group produced timeless hits such as Rivers of Babylon, Rasputin, and Daddy Cool, which topped charts worldwide. His ability to craft catchy melodies, combined with infectious rhythms, cemented Boney M's status as a disco phenomenon of the era. Farian's approach to music production was groundbreaking, often blending catchy vocals with a dynamic stage presence. While Boney M was fronted by charismatic performers like Bobby Farrell, it was Farian's own voice behind many of the tracks, a fact that was emblematic of his behind-the-scenes role in the music world. Farian's career reached further global recognition with the creation of Millie Vanilli in the late 1980s. The duo, consisting of dancers Rob Pilatus and Fabrice Morvan, shot to stardom with hits like Girl You Know It's True. However, the act became embroiled in a major scandal when it was revealed that they had lip-synced to pre-recorded vocals. While the fallout was immense, it underscored Farian's relentless drive to produce hits, even at the cost of controversy. Beyond Boney M and Millie Vanilli, Farian continued to shape the Eurodance scene with groups like La Bouche, No Mercy, and Le Click in the 1990s. His success earned him over 850 million records sold and 800 gold and platinum certifications. Frank Farian's legacy is that of a musical visionary, one who pushed boundaries and crafted the sound of several generations. Despite the controversies, his talent for discovering and producing global hits remains unmatched. He is survived by his children and will be remembered as one of the most prolific figures in the history of modern pop music. Adamo Dionisi, the Italian actor best known for his role as Manfredi Anacleti in Subura, passed away at the age of 59, following a long illness. A captivating presence on screen, Dionisi's journey to acting was both unconventional and inspiring, rooted in resilience and reinvention. Born in Rome on September 30, 1965, Dionisi's early life was marked by a different path. As a former leader of Lazio's ultras group Irreducibili, his youth was characterized by intensity and rebellion. In 2001, his life took a dramatic turn when he was imprisoned for drug-related charges in Rebibia. It was there, behind bars, that Dionisi discovered a passion for acting. Engaging in prison theater projects, he found a creative outlet that transformed his perspective and offered him a new beginning. Dionysi's acting career officially began in 2008 with Chi Nasha Tondo, a film he co-wrote. His rugged authenticity and raw talent soon captured the attention of filmmakers like Abel Ferrara, who cast him in Pasolini, and Matteo Garone, who featured him in Dogman. But it was Stefano Solima's Subura that brought Dionisi widespread acclaim. As the ruthless crime boss Manfredi Anacleti, Dionisi became a familiar face to international audiences, reprising the role in the Netflix series adaptation. His portrayal of Manfredi was intense and magnetic, cementing him as one of Italian television's unforgettable villains. Despite personal challenges, including another arrest in 2017, Dionisi continued to pursue acting with determination. In recent years, he appeared in films like Brutia Cattivi, Morrison, Enea, and Marta Dia Venerdì. His TV credits also include the series Rocco Schiavone. His final on-screen appearance was a cameo in Maurizio Lombardi's short film Marcello, released shortly before his passing. 
Adamo Dionysi's story is one of transformation, marked by passion, redemption, and a deep commitment to his craft. He will be remembered for his powerful performances, raw talent, and the unique journey that defined his life. His legacy as one of Italian cinema's compelling actors will continue to inspire audiences and artists alike. Mel Showers, the legendary news anchor and trailblazing journalist, passed away on October 19th at the age of 78. Known as the voice of the Gulf Coast, Showers' remarkable career spanned over 50 years at WKRG-TV in Mobile, Alabama, making him a revered figure in local journalism and a symbol of resilience and dedication. Born in Mobile in 1946, Showers grew up on the city's north side. He served as a military intelligence analyst in the U.S. Air Force, stationed in the Far East and Middle East before returning stateside to pursue a career in broadcasting. In 1969, Showers joined WKRG, initially working part-time as a booth announcer. His talent, hard work, and determination soon propelled him into full-time roles, where he became a pioneer in the industry. In 1980, Showers made history as one of the first black news anchors on the Gulf Coast, breaking barriers in the predominantly white field of journalism. Over the years, he became known not only for his professional skill, but also for his compassion, integrity, and connection with the community. He covered major stories like Hurricane Frederick in 1979 and the tragic lynching of Michael Donald in 1981, often being the first on the scene of critical events. His reporting was characterized by accuracy, empathy, and a calm presence, which endeared him to viewers across generations. In 2019, after five decades of service, Showers retired from full-time work, marking the end of an era. His final broadcast was a momentous occasion, celebrated by colleagues and viewers alike, as he became WKRG's anchor emeritus. He continued to contribute special reports and provide insightful commentary on issues impacting the Gulf Coast, demonstrating his unwavering commitment to informing and uplifting his community. Showers' contributions were widely recognized. He was inducted into the Alabama Broadcasting Hall of Fame and honored as a journalist of distinction by the National Association of Black Journalists. Beyond his professional accomplishments, Showers was a devoted family man, married to Linda Reed Showers for 44 years until her passing in 2012. His legacy lives on not only in the world of journalism but in the hearts of the Gulf Coast community, where he will forever be remembered as a pioneering voice, a mentor, and a beloved figure who championed truth and justice. Alvin Rakoff, the celebrated Canadian director, passed away on October 12th at the age of 97. With a career spanning over seven decades, Rakoff made an indelible mark on film, television, and theater, leaving behind a legacy of groundbreaking work and mentorship. Born on February 6, 1927 in Toronto to immigrant parents from Ukraine and Russia, Rakoff's path to the arts began with writing. After graduating from the University of Toronto, he initially worked as a journalist before finding his passion for directing. He transitioned to television with the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation and was soon sent to the UK to learn from the BBC. It was there that his directing career truly took off, making him the youngest producer-director in BBC's drama department at just 26 years old. Rakoff was renowned for his ability to spot and nurture talent. He famously gave Sean Connery his first leading role in Requiem for a Heavyweight and later cast Alan Rickman as Tybalt, in a BBC production of Romeo and Juliet, marking Rickman's first major break in acting. His keen eye for emerging talent extended to working with actors like Judi Dench, Michael Caine, and Laurence Olivier, contributing to their early careers. His directorial accomplishments included notable TV productions like Call Me Daddy, which won him his first Emmy Award in 1967, and A Voyage Round My Father, which earned him a second Emmy. He also directed critically acclaimed films like Say Hello to Yesterday, starring Gene Simmons and Hoffman, featuring Peter Sellers. Rakoff's versatility extended to theater, where he directed works ranging from Hamlet at Bristol Old Vic to A Sentimental Journey, a musical tribute to Doris Day. Rakoff's creative pursuits were not limited to directing. He was also a successful writer, penning three novels, 
including Angelion and Baldwin Street, inspired by his early life in Toronto. He remained active in theater and writing well into his later years, embodying a lifelong passion for the arts. Rakoff's influence on the entertainment industry was immense, not just for his work, but for the careers he helped launch and the stories he brought to life. His legacy will be remembered as one of vision, dedication, and an enduring love for storytelling. Bill Hayes, the beloved American actor and recording artist, passed away at the age of 98 in Studio City, Los Angeles. Known for his long and multifaceted career, Hayes left an enduring mark on both the music and television industries. Born on June 5, 1925 in Harvey, Illinois, Hayes served in the U.S. Navy Air Corps during World War II before returning to civilian life. He completed his education at DePauw University, earning degrees in music and English. His love for music led him to become a singer on Your Show of Shows in the early 1950s. It was during this period that he achieved national fame with The Ballad of Davy Crockett, which topped the Billboard charts for five weeks in 1955. The song sold over two million copies and became a cultural phenomenon, making Hayes a household name. Hayes's career took a turn towards acting in the 1970s when he joined NBC's Days of Our Lives, originating the role of Doug Williams in 1970. The role was a significant chapter in his life, not only bringing him recognition as a dramatic actor, but also introducing him to his future wife, Susan Seaforth Hayes. The couple's on-screen and off-screen romance captivated audiences, even earning them a cover feature on Time magazine in 1976, a rare honor for soap opera stars. Bill and Susan's chemistry became legendary, with their character's love story remaining a core element of the series for decades. Throughout his life, Hayes displayed a remarkable ability to adapt, transitioning smoothly from music to acting. He earned a master's degree in music from Northwestern University and later a PhD in education from West Virginia University, underscoring his commitment to lifelong learning. Off screen, Hayes was a devoted husband and father. He had five children from his first marriage to Mary Hobbs and cherished his long lasting partnership with Susan Seaforth Hayes. The couple co-authored their autobiography, Like Sands Through the Hourglass, and were active supporters of the West Texas Rehab Center. Bill Hayes will be remembered for his talent, charm, and dedication to his craft, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire. His contributions to music and television were immense, and he remains a cherished figure among fans and colleagues alike. Alec Musser, the talented American actor and fitness model, passed away at the age of 50 in Del Mar, California. Musser's life and career were marked by versatility, passion, and resilience, making him a recognizable figure in television and the modeling industry. Born Alexander Barrett Musser, he was raised on the East Coast in New Jersey and Connecticut, later attending the University of San Diego. Musser's journey into the spotlight began unexpectedly when he was approached by a modeling agent. This opportunity quickly launched him into a successful career with brands like Abercrombie and Fitch, Gianfranco Ferre, and Men's Health. His work took him across the globe, allowing him to model in Paris, Greece, South Africa, and beyond. Musser's natural charisma and athletic physique made him a standout in the modeling world, but it was his entry into acting that truly expanded his horizons. In 2005, he gained national recognition by winning the reality TV contest, I Wanna Be a Soap Star. This victory earned him a role on the popular soap opera, All My Children, where he portrayed Del Henry. His portrayal of the character resonated with audiences, and what began as a 13-week stint turned into an extended contract, showcasing Musser's talent and appeal as an actor. In addition to his soap opera success, Musser made guest appearances in shows like Desperate Housewives and had a role in the film Grown Ups. Despite his successes, Musser faced personal challenges throughout his life, including the tragic impact of his father's suicide during his adolescence, as shared by his brother John. This profound trauma influenced Musser's mental health journey and added layers of complexity to his personal life. Alec Musser's passing by suicide is a heartbreaking reminder of the importance of mental health awareness and support. He will be remembered not just for his talent and achievements in modeling and acting,
but also for his warmth, ambition, and the genuine kindness he showed to those around him. His story emphasizes the need for compassion and understanding toward those who may be silently struggling. Musser's legacy is one of courage, both in his career pursuits and in facing life's battles. He will be dearly missed by family, friends, and fans. Joyce Randolph, best known for her portrayal of Trixie Norton on The Honeymooners, passed away at the age of 99 at her Manhattan home. As the last surviving cast member of the iconic series, her passing marks the end of an era in television history. Born on October 21, 1924, in Detroit, Randolph's journey into acting began with local theater as a teenager and later led her to New York City in 1943 to pursue her dreams on a larger stage. In the early 1950s, a chance appearance in a Chlorace commercial caught the eye of Jackie Gleason, who invited her to appear on his show Cavalcade of Stars. This led to her iconic role as Thelma Trixie Norton, the lovable wife of Ed Norton, played by Art Carney, on The Honeymooners. Randolph's character, Trixie, was a vital part of the comedic dynamic that made The Honeymooners a beloved classic. The show, which also starred Jackie Gleason as Ralph Cramden and Audrey Meadows as Alice Cramden, showcased her charm, comedic timing, and warmth, making her a household name during television's golden age. Though her lines were few compared to her co-stars, Randolph's presence was undeniable, and her character left an indelible mark on viewers. Gleason himself regarded her as the quintessential Trixie, a testament to her embodiment of the role. Despite her success on The Honeymooners, Randolph faced typecasting afterward, making it challenging to find diverse roles. Yet, she remained active in summer stock musicals, television commercials, and guest appearances, staying connected to the entertainment world. In 1991, she briefly reprised her role as Trixie in Hi Honey I'm Home, bringing nostalgia to longtime fans. Randolph's legacy extends beyond the screen. She was known for her grace, humor, and resilience, both in her career and personal life. Her enduring role as Trixie Norton made her an integral part of American pop culture, remembered fondly by generations of fans. Her long and fulfilling life stands as a testament to her enduring spirit as she remained graciously connected to her roots while navigating the ups and downs of show business. Joyce Randolph's contribution to the arts will be cherished, and she will forever be remembered as the original Trixie Norton, a symbol of classic television comedy. Hinton Battle, the acclaimed actor, dancer, singer, and choreographer, passed away at 67 in Los Angeles after a lengthy illness. His influence on Broadway and beyond was immense, leaving a lasting legacy as one of the most versatile talents of his generation. Born in Germany and raised in Washington, D.C. and New York City, Battle showed an early passion for the performing arts. He started studying ballet at age nine, earning a scholarship to the School of American Ballet, where he trained under George Balanchine. This early dedication set the stage for an extraordinary career. Battle made his Broadway debut in 1975, portraying the Scarecrow in The Wiz, a role that would later be famously played by Michael Jackson in the film adaptation. From that moment, Battle became a defining presence on the Broadway stage, winning three Tony Awards for Sophisticated Ladies, The Tap Dance Kid, and Miss Saigon. He was renowned not just for his remarkable dance skills, but also for his powerful voice, as evidenced by his stirring performance of Bui Doi in Miss Saigon. Battle's talents were not confined to the stage. He was a familiar face in television and film, with notable roles in Quantum Leap, Dreamgirls, and as Sweet the Jazz Demon in the musical episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. His role as Sweet showcased both his acting and choreographic skills, cementing his reputation as a triple threat in the entertainment world. Beyond his performances, Battle was a trailblazing choreographer. He worked on various productions, including the Academy Awards, the musical episode of Buffy, and the off-Broadway hit Evil Dead the Musical. His creativity extended to developing Swap, a dance form that combined swing and hip-hop, which he introduced on Dancing with the Stars. Throughout his life, Battle remained committed to sharing his love for dance and performance. In 2017, he founded the Hinton Battle Dance Academy in Japan, 
nurturing a new generation of dancers. His contributions to the arts earned him the honor of Broadway's marquees dimming their lights on March 12, 2024, a tribute reserved for the most influential figures in theater. Hinton Battle's talent, dedication, and pioneering spirit will forever be remembered, not only on Broadway but throughout the entertainment world. Linda Gravatt, an esteemed American actress of theater, film, and television, passed away at 76 in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Her career spanned decades, leaving an indelible mark on the world of performing arts. Born in Harlem on May 24, 1947, Gravatt was raised by adoptive parents. Her love for the arts blossomed early. She made her Broadway debut at just four years old in The King and I and performed recitals at Carnegie Hall by age nine. She continued her passion for acting at Howard University, where she graduated in 1971. During her college years, she was actively involved in the living stage and was a founding member of the DC Black Repertory Company. Gravatt's remarkable stage career included standout performances in productions like King Headley II, 45 Seconds from Broadway, and Doubt. Her final Broadway role was as Big Mama in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof in 2008. She was a familiar presence in theaters across the country, from the Kennedy Center to the Alabama Shakespeare Festival. Gravatt was known for her intense portrayals in plays like A Raisin in the Sun, The Little Foxes, and Skeleton Crew. Her last stage appearance was in the revolving cycles truly and steadily rolled in 2018. In addition to her theater work, Gravatt made her mark in television with roles in One Life to Live, The Good Wife, 30 Rock, Romy, and East New York. Her film credits included The Bounty Hunter, Delivery Man, Roman J. Israel, Escure, and The Outside Story. Her commitment to her craft was evident in every performance, no matter the medium. Gravatt's talent earned her numerous accolades, including four Odelco nominations, a 1999 Theatre World Award for The Old Settler, and a Helen Hayes Award for Intimate Apparel. She was also a dedicated educator, teaching at Howard University, Rutgers University, and the Duke Ellington School of the Arts, where she was a founding faculty member. Linda Gravatt's legacy is defined not only by her powerful performances, but also by her contributions as a mentor and teacher, inspiring a new generation of actors. She leaves behind two children, five grandchildren, and countless admirers who will forever cherish her remarkable artistry. Chris Gauthier, an English-born Canadian actor renowned for his versatility, passed away at 48. Throughout his career, Gauthier became a familiar face in both film and television, earning admiration from audiences worldwide. Born in Luton, England, Gauthier moved with his family to Armstrong, British Columbia when he was five. He discovered a passion for acting early on and trained at the Vernon School of Speech and Drama. This foundation paved the way for a career that spanned a wide array of roles across genres, from action-packed thrillers to whimsical fantasy. Gauthier is perhaps best known for his role as Neville in Need for Speed, Carbon, and William Smee in the beloved series Once Upon a Time. His portrayal of Smee, Captain Hook's loyal yet comical right-hand man, endeared him to fans of the fantasy series, highlighting his ability to infuse humor and warmth into his characters. He also gained recognition for his role as Vincent, the owner of Café DM, in the sci-fi series Eureka, where his performance added depth to the show's quirky universe. Gauthier's talents were not limited to television. He left a mark in films like Freddy vs. Jason, where he played Shaq, and Honey Girls, a family-friendly film produced by Sony Pictures in collaboration with Bill De Bear Entertainment. In addition, he appeared in Harper's Island, a gripping mystery series, and took on the role of Toy Man in Smallville, showcasing his range in the sci-fi genre. Chris Gauthier's work was characterized by his natural charm and comedic timing, making each of his characters memorable. His passion for acting was evident in every role he took on, no matter the size or scope. Off-screen, he was known as a kind and dedicated performer, beloved by colleagues and fans alike for his down-to-earth demeanor and genuine approach to his craft. Gauthier's legacy is one of talent, humor, and a lasting contribution to both Canadian and international entertainment. He is survived by a devoted fan base that will remember him fondly, 
not only for the characters he brought to life, but for the joy and laughter he shared through his performances. Iris Apfel, who passed away at the age of 102, was an iconic American businesswoman, interior designer, and fashion maven. Known for her bold style, signature oversized glasses, and irreverent flair, Apfel transformed how we perceive fashion and aging. Born in Astoria, Queens, New York City, in 1921, Apfel had a creative spirit from a young age. She pursued art history at New York University and later developed a passion for textiles. In 1950, she and her husband, Carl, founded Old World Weavers, a successful textile firm specializing in historic fabric reproductions. This venture led to prestigious projects, including working on White House restorations for nine presidents, from Truman to Clinton. Apfel's career took an unexpected turn when, in 2005, the Costume Institute at the Metropolitan Museum of Art showcased her vibrant personal collection in the exhibit Rara Avis, Rare Bird, the irreverent Iris Apfel. The exhibition celebrated her love for eclectic and unique ensembles, cementing her as a fashion icon. She continued to inspire audiences with her bold fashion sense, blending high-end couture with flea market finds. Beyond her work in design, Apfel was recognized for her unique contributions to fashion. In 2014, she was the subject of Albert Maisel's documentary Iris, which chronicled her extraordinary journey. At the age of 97, she signed with IMG Models, proving that style and influence have no age limit. Apfel also published a memoir, Iris Apfel, Accidental Icon, reflecting on her remarkable life and career. Apfel was not just a fashion icon, but also a mentor and advocate. She served as a visiting professor at the University of Texas at Austin and collaborated with several brands, launching smart jewelry and modeling campaigns. Her legacy includes a Barbie doll in her likeness, a testament to her enduring influence in popular culture. Iris Apfel's passing marks the end of an era, but her spirit of creativity boldness and individuality will continue to inspire generations. Her motto, more is more and less is a bore, encapsulates a life lived without compromise, a true testament to her belief that age is merely a number, not a barrier to style and self-expression. Steve Lawrence, who passed away at the age of 88, was a cherished American singer, comedian, and actor. Renowned as one half of the beloved pop duo Steve and Edie, Alongside his wife, Adie Gourmet, Lawrence captured the hearts of audiences with his rich voice, vibrant performances, and enduring contributions to the entertainment industry. Born Sidney Leibowitz in Brooklyn, New York, Lawrence's passion for music blossomed early. At just 16, he signed with King Records, setting the stage for a remarkable career. In 1954, Lawrence and Gourmet became regulars on Tonight starring Steve Allen, sparking a dynamic partnership that spanned over five decades. Their performances ranged from TV variety shows and nightclubs to Broadway musicals, making them one of the most successful duos in American entertainment history. Lawrence's solo career also thrived, with hits like Go Away Little Girl, which reached number one. One on the Billboard Hot 100 in 1963, his talents extended beyond music to acting, with memorable roles in The Blues Brothers, Hardcastle and McCormick, and The Nanny. His Broadway role in What Makes Sammy Run earned him acclaim, further showcasing his versatility as a performer. Lawrence and Gourmet's chemistry, both on and off stage, was legendary. Married for 56 years until Gourmet's passing in 2013, the duo's love and commitment shone through in their performances. Their Emmy-winning special Steve and Idy Celebrate Irving Berlin and Grammy-winning album We Got Us are among the many accolades that highlight their career. Together, they were honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Despite personal tragedies, including the loss of their son Michael in 1986, Lawrence's resilience and dedication to his craft never waned. He bravely shared his Alzheimer's diagnosis in 2019, demonstrating the same grace and honesty that defined his career. Steve Lawrence's legacy is one of timeless music, genuine humor, and a deep connection with audiences. He will be remembered not only as a gifted performer, but as an artist who brought joy, love, and laughter to countless fans. 
his voice and spirit will continue to resonate through the songs and memories he created. Ron Harper, who passed away at the age of 91, was a versatile American actor known for his dynamic roles on television and film. With a career spanning over six decades, Harper left a lasting impression on the entertainment industry and on those who watched his performances. Born Ronald Robert Harper in Turtle Creek, Pennsylvania, Harper excelled academically, earning straight A's at Turtle Creek High School. He then attended Princeton University, where he discovered his passion for acting and joined the university players. Despite being offered a fellowship to Harvard Law, Harper chose to follow his artistic dreams, studying under renowned acting coach Lee Strasberg after serving in the U.S. Navy during the Korean War. Harper's acting career began on Broadway as Paul Newman's understudy in Sweet Bird of Youth in 1959. This marked the start of a journey that soon led him to Hollywood, where he made his television debut on NBC's Tales of Wells Fargo in 1960. He gained steady work throughout the 1960s and 1970s, with roles in classic TV shows like Laramie, The Tall Man, and Wagon Train. Harper found success as a regular performer on popular series such as Planet of the Apes and Land of the Lost, where he played Uncle Jack in the third season. Harper's film work included roles in Below Utopia, The Odd Couple 2, and The Poughkeepsie Tapes, demonstrating his adaptability across different genres. He was also a familiar face in soap operas, appearing in Where the Heart Is and Love of Life, adding to his diverse body of work. Throughout his career, Harper was respected for his dedication, professionalism, and depth as an actor. He was known for his humble demeanor and commitment to his craft, earning the admiration of his peers and fans alike. Ron Harper will be remembered as a talented performer who brought authenticity and heart to every role he played. His legacy as an actor who successfully navigated the evolving landscape of Hollywood stands as a testament to his enduring passion for storytelling. Eric Gilliland, who passed away at the age of 62, was a beloved television producer, writer, actor, and talented whistler whose work brought humor and warmth to audiences for decades. He died after a courageous battle with colon cancer. Born on March 28, 1962 in Glenview, Illinois, Eric's passion for storytelling and performing arts emerged early on. After graduating from Glenbrook South High School in 1980, he pursued his love for communication and drama at Northwestern University, earning his degree in 1984 from the School of Communication. With a natural talent for crafting engaging narratives and delivering humor with sincerity, Eric found his calling in the television industry. Eric's career in television was marked by an impressive array of roles, particularly in production and writing. He contributed to many well-loved TV shows, bringing creativity, wit, and depth to scripts that resonated with audiences. As both a writer and producer, he was known for his unique ability to blend comedy with heartfelt storytelling, making viewers laugh while also touching their hearts. Though his work behind the scenes defined much of his career, Eric's skills as an actor and his unexpected talent as a whistler added layers to his versatile artistic persona. Colleagues often spoke of his infectious enthusiasm, collaborative spirit, and unwavering dedication to the craft. He was not just a talented writer and producer, but also a mentor who inspired many emerging creators with his warmth and generosity. Despite the demands of the entertainment industry, Eric remained devoted to his family, friends, and community. His kindness and sense of humor left a lasting impression on everyone he met, both professionally and personally. Those who knew him best remember him as a man who could light up a room with his energy and wit, whether on set or at a casual gathering. Eric Gilliland's legacy is not only the laughter and joy he shared through his television projects, but also the profound impact he made on those he worked with. His storytelling, infused with authenticity and humor, will continue to be cherished by audiences and industry peers alike. Eric's life and work remind us of the power of laughter and the enduring connection it creates. He will be deeply missed but fondly remembered by all who had the privilege to know him and enjoy his work. Breaking news. News 1. Sylvester Stallone has revealed shocking details about the injuries he sustained while filming The Expendables in 2010, which led to seven surgeries over the last 14 years. In the season two premiere of his reality show, The Family Stallone, 
the 78-year-old actor reflected on the serious toll of an on-set accident that continues to affect him. During a fight scene with co-star Steve Austin, Stallone was slammed into a stone wall, resulting in dislocated shoulders and a fractured neck. I did stupid stuff, Stallone admitted. I kept doing take after take. I remember one slam, and I felt something crack. I never fully recovered. The injuries required multiple surgeries, including spinal fusion and a metal plate in his neck. The most recent procedure, completed in August 2024, marks his seventh surgery tied to the incident. Stallone's family has been vocal about their concerns. Daughter Scarlett shared that her father has faced years of pain, while wife Jennifer Flavin called it a scary time, hoping that this surgery finally brings him relief. The action star's resilience continues to inspire fans, showing that even Hollywood's toughest can face real-life battles. News 2 Shania Twain is shining once again, celebrating her triumphant return after years of vocal challenges. At the 2024 People's Choice Country Awards, the 59-year-old country superstar shared her journey to reclaim her voice after vocal cord damage from Lyme disease left her temporarily unable to sing. Open throat surgery in 2018 was the key to restoring her vocals. When you realize you have another chance at something you love, you put fear aside and go for it, Twain told People, reflecting on her determination to overcome this setback. Her resilience, she added, was essential to getting through the tough years. Twain, who hosted the awards, dazzled in a rhinestone-studded denim halter gown, embracing her iconic style. She expressed her passion for every aspect of music, from songwriting to production. I wear a lot of hats and that keeps me motivated, she shared. Twain's story of perseverance and creativity is inspiring fans worldwide, proving she's still a force in country music. Her comeback not only marks a personal victory, but also solidifies her status as a true symbol of resilience in the industry.